Yeah, I think this is a great matchup. It's a striking match through and through. I think we're both smart fighters. Most likely there's going to be some fun exchanges. Whatever it takes to win is, is what I want to do. If you can't beat Max Holloway, I firmly believe you don't deserve to be champion. I was put on this world to fight. In the old Hawaiian days, I probably would have been a warrior. The gladiator days, I probably would have been a gladiator. All this sacrifice and everything, is it worth it? To me, yes it is, 100%. I'm really blessed. I like I have my beautiful wife. We got married last year. This is perfect timing. Things fell into place. She took on this role, being my wife and being stuck with me. So, guess I win. It's so hot. We're gonna just run to the shore. She's a great mother to my child. What else more can you ask for? We love the beach, we love going in the water. My wife got me and Rush into surfing, so we've been loving surfing lately. There's times where I feel like he'll need a break just from the intensity of fighting, and I'll be like, you know what, babe, let's go surf. Let's relax. It's kind of detox everything that you're going through. You know, that's why I love her, you know, she keeps me straight. The water is healing, you know. In the old Hawaiian days, they'd use it to actually heal themselves. I love being a dad. It's just amazing that I have this opportunity. I'm able to provide and I'm able to be there. But my son, Rush. A little sweetheart, man. Mr. Aloha. A lot of people call him. Loving on everybody, giving good, positive vibes all the time. I was quite the opposite of Rush growing up. I was like a hothead. Not Mr. Aloha. Me and Alessa, we're from the same town. It's Y and I. I always knew of her, you know. I knew she was killing it with the World Surf League. Having the success that she had in her sport, she understands the mindset, how to balance personal life with professional life, and I'm not gonna lie, it's tough. This fight is what MMA is all about. The best of the best in their primes. The last fight I fought was Volk 3. He needs a finish to avoid going 0-3 against the champion, Alexander Volkanovsky. He looked good, he looked great. Big oh, nice elbow, elbow, yeah. Shot opened up a big cut. Over the eye, Holloway, Oh, yep. that's bad. Sometimes you run into a fight and it's just not your day. Volkanovski is showing a different level tonight. He's just a step ahead. I can sit here and just tell you a bunch of excuses. This is not a close fight. But why? <laughs> that fight went his way. The champion, Alexander Volkanovsky, with a signature performance. Wow. That's why it's so hard to be a UFC fighter, I think. Because you have these bad days, it's stuck with you all into the next one. I feel bad when I do lose just because uh, I just hate wasting people's time. I remember the first thing he's telling me, he's like, I'm so sorry, babe, I failed you. But I'm just proud that he's doing what he loves and that he's okay. 
keep chopping. It's important to not let a result define who you Goodness. are. It can be heartbreaking to lose. And all that hard work can feel like it's for nothing, but it really, it never is. Like losing is a big part of winning. It's the only way you learn how to get better. You know, that, that's what makes a person. That's what builds character. That's the journey. Anybody that sit here and tell you this is an easy journey is lying to you. If someone told me to go back and change one thing, I would have I changed the damn thing. I always said when I'm far done, the only thing that people are going to remember is legacy. You know, I've been with the UFC when I was 20. I'm only 31 right now. I got a lot left in me. Everybody asks me if I can handle the heat. I, I am the heat, you know, I, I'm Hawaiian heat. April 15th, my family, my friends, my wife, my son, I owe it to all of them. I just gotta go out there and remind people. Remind people who I am. Everything I do in my life is dedicated to bettering this. I work hard between fights and I always had a plan that every time I fight it would be better than the last fight. I'm gonna step up every time, every time. I'm now fighting someone people regard as one of the best featherweights ever, so I must be doing something right to get this opportunity. I'm from Trimley St. Martin, which is down the road from Felix though. It's a quiet little town. Literally the main thing, or maybe the only thing it's known for, is the port. It's kind of like a rite of passage. Everyone that is from here has pretty much worked on the port or will work on the port at some point. You know, my dad drives a truck, my brother's worked on the docks. Before I was fighting in the UFC, I was unloading containers and loading containers and whatnot. It was a good workout. Bringing the belt back to England, it means everything. It's nice to be home around those people, it's sort of, it reminds you who you do it for. I want to motivate the next generation, inspire kids that sort of want to do the same thing. Just show the things you can do from a small town, and if you want to do it, you can go out and get it. Growing up, my dad, he was a strong man. He used to compete in strong man. He fought professionally in MMA at a good level. He worked very hard to chase his goals. He was working night shifts at a club and then day shifts driving a truck. And in between that, he would do his training. He didn't necessarily achieve what he set out to, but the work ethic he put in motivated me to work hard. I took him to the local gym where I was training to keep him out of trouble more than anything, and uh, he just had a, a flare, just flicked. All the instructors just said he's beautiful to train. So, from an early age, he loved this. And once the bug bit, you couldn't stop him from training. When I was about 15, 16, I got kicked out of school. I was supposed to go to some, like, naughty boy school, and I'd get dropped off at the school, and then I'd walk around the back, and then walk to the gym and go train instead. And that was better than hanging out at that school. I weren't learning nothing. My dad told me, you know, just whatever you do, work hard and make it work. Don't sit at home scratching your ass all day, basically. I never doubted myself. It was like, all systems go, like, I'm ready for this shot. I'm currently doing what I have my mind set on, so I guess I've proven myself right. And now I've worked hard and it's working out. Looks like we've got ourselves a new star coming out of the UK. Nice guillotine attempt, he's got that locked up. Wow, there is a victory in his Octagon debut! Oh. oh, man. Look at the kid, I mean, he's young, he's strong, and he's hungry. That combination was nasty! Oh, oh wow, wow! Oh, he heard a bad. Bear walks, triple A. This is his breakout moment. The fight with Dan Hooker is one of my favorite performances. 
Massive UK card. He's a huge name. Got massive highlight reel knockouts and submissions over like top tier opponents. I mean, look at Arnold Allen. Oh, Arnold's going supersonic. Good lord. Man, Dan is in trouble. There was just something about that night. The crowd was buzzing. It was just a different energy in the arena. Whoa! Arnold Allen is unleashing on him right now. I managed to get a first round TKO over Dan Hooker. He's done it! It's the biggest win of his career for Arnold Allen! Next was the Calvin Cater fight. It was kind of the same exact principle. Undefeated in the UFC, getting better and better every single time out. Nice. Lovely. This fight is everything. Max Holloway is the man for me to beat. Yeah. There's nothing more motivated than going in there against someone that is X champ, X pound for pound number one. He's done it all. He's done all the things I want to do. He's the caliber he is, he's the level he is for a reason. That's perfect. For Arnold, it's a good fight. We're really excited for him to be able to showcase himself against one of the, the very best in the world. Max is really good with his pressure. It takes a lot to deter him from coming forward as well. But with Arnold, he's always had a mean streak, and when he smells blood, he, he goes for it. He is a brutal, nice. aggressive fighter when he needs to be, and the more these opponents sort of put the pressure on Arnold, I think you're going to see much more of that killer instinct come out. He's a high-pressure guy. He walks you down, he pressures you. He's relentless, he just keeps coming forward. It makes for a very exciting fight, and uh, yeah, I'm most likely gonna oblige that exciting fight, and it's gonna be a good one. I wanna put on a striking clinic and, and show my level and show that I belong in that sort of elite featherweight category. I'm more calculated, more measured, more accurate. I'm gonna go out there and show it. I want people to realize I'm champion quality. How did I go to be great? Hard work, dedication, a little luck, a little prayer, and a lot of sacrifice. Prayers and belief, man. It goes a long way. My work ethic came from watching people who was talented. So I was like, you know, to catch up to these guys, I gotta put in more time, extra time than them. Going to this workout, going to all my workouts, it's me versus me. It's me versus me all the time. The check engine light is coming on, we ignore it. We can take care of it later on. If I can kill myself, a guy standing across from me in the outcon is not gonna kill me. If you wanna stay on top of the game, that you wanna be the best, uh, you need to keep changing. If you're not changing, somebody's better gonna come along and uh, take it. You gotta change at the times and you gotta grow. This is one of the greatest featherweights of all time. Oh. Oh. So good in so many ways. If you're trying to get someone into mixed martial arts. The best you, baby. Oh, oh, Max Holloway show tonight. Tell him tune into one of my fights. Enter the former champion, future Hall of Famer, Max Blessed Holloway. That your year fight would definitely be in the top five that you must show. Oh! The fight ended up to be everything I thought it would be. He's fast, explosive. Tell me another guy who could stand pretty much nose to nose and then throw a high kick and hit you with it. He's a tough Mexican, man. It had to be one of the funnest fights I ever had. Oh, nice! Guy is hurt. Are you trying to get someone into MMA? Two warriors. Look no further. Max Holloway and Yair Rodriguez go the distance. One in the history books. 
If you want to beat the best, you got to be the best. And the best is blessed, baby. All love to your year. What an incredible fight, a display of martial arts. The track is good sometimes. It gives me time to reflect, think about the practice, think about what I'm going to do at practice while I'm hitting there. I would say I use this drive more of meditation. Like, fighters in general are crazy. I could never imagine wanting to, like, put myself in a place where I'm going to possibly get hit in the face. So that's, that's a crazy kind of energy there. But it's cool. And I, I do admire the way Max trains. I've never seen the amount of intensity that an athlete puts into when I'm at Max. Come April 15, I get to show you guys who I am all over again. Especially the way that last Volkanovski fight went. Nice. Nice. That's it. Gotta keep the same flow going. Um, what you do is uh, your right kick, though. Change it as you want between body kick and then a little kick. Yeah. Arno Allen. I know he's a tough dude, tough guy. The guys that he's been beating recently have been amazing. He's been doing them in amazing fashion. I'm just a well-rounded MMA guy. Great jiu-jitsu, great wrestling, uh, good IQ. I know he likes to strike, but a lot of people like to strike till we get in there and things go another way. Knocking someone clean out is amazing. You take someone's soul without them even knowing. But beating someone down until they quit, they knowing what's going on, has a whole different feeling. A visualization is key to me. I visualize the ways that I can win the fight. I visualize the ways I can lose the fight. I visualize certain combinations that I'm gonna hit on this guy. Perfect visualization. I get it done within three rounds. Dude's on a 10 fight win streak. I'd be happy to be that guy to end the win streak. If you want to be the champ, you got to carry yourself as the champ. You got to have the attitude. I can't wait to show the world the best possible version of me. Yeah, even the dogs were overproofed. Yeah. All we needed is snow, weren't it? I thought you used to put on strongman events, so we got like kegs and stones and big weights and stuff. But I think this is older than me, right? I remember this in your gym. Yeah, this followed us right this has. So I remember me and Jake doing pull ups on it when I was about 10. Yeah, the oldest son wanted to build a roof to save us from the elements. And we said, don't you dare. Don't you dare. This is hardcore, man. I've been out here in thunderstorms, curling. One thing I see with my dad, he's never been like afraid to fail. He always puts a priority on living, you know. He always puts a priority on chasing a goal. His work ethic is something that influenced me massively. Maybe without that, I wouldn't have been as driven as I am now. Come on, Carlos, how do I? Come on. Yeah, it's a blessing. My dad was never really uh, interested in anything I'd done. In fact, he thought I was crazy. His ideology was to go to work, earn money, put a life together for yourself. My idea was to earn enough money to enjoy myself, lifting weights and basically showing off. I found something that, you know, made me happy. I think it's a mindset with Arnie. It means a lot, obviously, that he achieves his dream. I mean, whatever makes him happy. But as long as he's got the desire to push forward and achieve his dreams, then of course, you know, I would help him. The fight with Bunnell wasn't a great one. I was sick, uh, the chest affection one. I felt like absolute shit. My manager and coach, Jack, his flight got stuck somewhere, so my dad stepped in for Jack. 
Mads Bernal is having his way. Arnold Allen struggling to hold him off. I think it would have been very easy to fold. It would have been very easy to just go, oh, no, it's this guy's night, you know. You can't quit in front of your dad. For me, there's just nothing more embarrassing. I'm confident for him. And I think that's maybe the part I play, because I think the only thing he does is look to me uh, just before he sets off. And, you know, I just give him a nod. We're good. You're good. You got this. Oh, look at this. He's wrapped it up. That looks tight. Mads Bunnell's trying to bail out. Oh! What a comeback for Arnold Allen! Wow! It's nice having your dad in your corner. You push a little bit, actually, you know. There's always that something that you want to make your dad proud. It's there. Hard work in the office, huh? <laughs> well done, son. Brilliant. You listed your father as a hero. Did you find an extra strength there for that front choke from your father? Yeah, for sure. I'd be fucking embarrassed. We get home, I'll be doing the dishes again. You know what I mean? But yeah, he's a man. He's a man. We're heading to Team Renegade in Birmingham. It's about a three hour drive. Uh, they got some good guys there. Leon Edwards, that's his, uh, that's his team. We made the drive down a couple times a week, get some sparring in, train with all those boys. I come along for the ride. I enjoy it. Any way I can help with his, uh, with his career, then I'll do it. And plus it keeps me involved and, uh, yeah, keeps me relative. Me and Arnie would basically just argue for two and a half hours, which kind of get him in the right frame of mind. By the time he gets there, he's so pissed. Cheers. Leon is someone I really enjoy watching. He's literally walked the path I want to walk, and now he's world champion, you know, and being in a gym with someone like that and seeing him do it firsthand is motivational. Just to know I can do it myself, because, yeah, I've seen the work he puts in, and, yeah, I've put the work in too. Arnie definitely knows what he's doing. You know, he's not getting swept away with the whole situation. He's, his feet are grounded. Yeah, he's not phased by the competition ahead of him. I'm proud of him as a person. Everything from yesterday's coming together as well. Okay. Yeah, all those things. Oh, it's hiding there, isn't it? He's entertaining. He's trying to hide a lot of it, I think, but there's some craziness inside him that is yet to come out. The fighting techniques that he's been hiding for all this time are slowly popping out here and there because uh, he's surprising a lot of people at the minute with a lot of this stuff, which I know is there. I mean, I trained with him from day one. You know, my son's going to be a world champion. I truly believe that. Bringing the belt back to England, you know, is much more than just achieving a dream. It's huge. That's inspirational to the next generation and the next generation after that as well. But at the end of the day, it is a fight, and I think fighting Max Holloway is massive. He's probably got a chip on his shoulder, he's pissed off, he wants to get back in and you know, prove he's still that elite level. It's an exciting time to fight him. The victory, the only way is up, right? If you beat Max Holloway, is his title fight or nothing, surely. I know that this is where I belong, you know, when that craziness fade away and I'm not hungry for these fights, then that's the time to step down. But right now, this is it. I still believe I'm the best striker in the world. If people think the numbers is crazy now, then it's going to be even more insane. You know, I've chased this path my whole life. I've put everything into it and I've literally dedicated everything to being the best I can at this. So I always back myself and believe in myself. I'm going to win this. I'm just going to go out there and show my class and show my ability. All the hard work I've been doing in the gym for the years and years and years, that's going to do the talking for me.